Hi, I'm Coach Raf, and welcome to this new video segment. Today, we're going to take a look at on how to teach pressing in the midfield to a team that plays a 4-4-2 versus a team that plays a 3-5-2 system of play in an 11v11 game. I will be covering this topic in two videos. In this video, I will illustrate with a little bit of help of uh, video animation how to train the midfield pressing in an 11v11 game highlighting the main coaching points and key factor individual and small group players of responsibility, zone defensive principle, and team movements in relation to the position of the ball. In the second video, it will be more of a, a practical session, a 11 v 11 session where I try to implement the key factor discussed in the first video in a game realistic situation. Before we start the video animation, let's talk a little bit about pressing. What is pressing? Pressing is the collective defensive movement of players in relation of the movements of the ball in a specific part of the field with the objective of winning the ball or preventing the opposition to advance it and score. There are three types of pressing. That is offensive pressing, midfield pressing, and defensive pressing. The way the team defends is strictly related to how it wants to attack. Factors like overall technical quality of the team, playing philosophy, movements in the game are key in determining where, when, and how to press. We can do a separate video on pressing, but let's take a look a little bit, uh, a brief overview on all of these three types of pressing that I mentioned before. Generally, if a team is technically uh, of high quality and attacking minded, then you want to use the offensive pressing approach trying to win the ball near the opposition defensive third, and from there try to score. The drawback for teams that adopt the, the offensive pressing is that the back line must be high, and if the opposition is able to come out, then they have lots of available space to attack and, uh, uh, and create problems for, the, for our team because it's unbalanced. If your team is limited technically and maybe you want to use the counterattack as a way to, to attack, then you want to adopt your defensive pressing. That means defending with numbers in front of the goal while limiting the opposition's space and time, making it difficult for the other team to penetrate behind the back four. Adopting a midfield pressing approach, like we're going to cover now, is somewhat in the middle. Uh, you have same, the same space behind uh, your back four that uh, the other team can exploit, but at the same time, you have the same space uh, available for you. So if you win the ball, it allows you flexibility and you can counterattack or use slow build-up play uh, instead. Usually teams of equal level uh, might use both uh, at this approach. I must point out that Choosing where to use, uh, to use pressing can also be determined by what's happening in the game, uh, the, uh, the scores at the time during the game, and special situations that they might arise. If you like the video, do not forget to click on like at the bottom here, and also to subscribe to this channel to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Also below, you can find the link to my website, coachraft.com, where you can find uh, past videos, articles, and session plans. I hope you enjoyed the video. The following is an 11 v 11 game format tactical session. The aim of the session is to re uh, teach team in a 4-4-2 formation how to defend in a ball-oriented zonal defense against a team playing a 3-5-2 system of play. The defending team will retreat and start pressurizing in the middle area of the park. The coach will focus on the role of the two strikers and the four midfielders. In this format, the coach will let both teams play for a few minutes and then will start to look at some coaching points. Restart points will be used to facilitate the objectives of the session. In this case, restart points will be uh, from the hands uh, of the goalkeeper and uh, from a throw-in near the area of uh, the attacking team. Uh, let's start to look at some situation. The goalkeeper has the ball and uh, in, in possession uh, the, uh, the defending team will retreat behind this black line and uh, as the players cross that line the, the ball will start to be pressurized.
notice with the ball <coughs> in a central position uh, to five, uh, everybody retreats behind the line and uh, and again leaves the outside areas kind of uh, unguarded. So the idea is to create concentration of players in the middle of the park. Now let's look at the responsibility of the the uh, uh, attackers. So with the ball in the middle, uh, one of the attackers we want them to be probably in front of the ball, but not pressuring the ball. So if if this will be the defending line right here, so the attacker will be quite here, so that the ball cannot be necessarily placed straight forward. Uh, if the ball is passed to one of the two defenders of the other uh, or the three defenders here the two or six then in this case 11 will come challenge and try to push the player to the wide area now number nine will come to drop behind and and take cover in this way now if the ball is back again towards the middle nine can go and pressure the ball while 11 we retreat behind diagonally. Now if the ball is shifted to the other side to six, it will be nine that will challenge this player, pressuring towards the wide area and uh, and and eleven to get diagonal two to nine. If the ball goes from six to three or from two to seven, it will be the outside midfielders now challenging the ball and we're looking at the whole team shifting from a central position towards the wide area and creating density. Now number four will shift and provide cover. So will eight and ten will come up to the center circle in line with eight. Nine will get a position between three and six so to cut off a possible pass or we'll try to inter intercept it while 11 will we get diagonal to two to nine and this is here how it's going to look in terms of movement here we go everybody shift towards the ball and uh, creates numbers up around the ball if the ball is passed to one of the midfielders let's say eight or four here's what we're gonna do in terms of of uh, the movement of the player so eight in this case will be the re player responsible to challenge and everybody will move in relation to to what eight does and here is an example how uh, it will look so eight pressures the ball ten and four gets in a covering position and 11 doubles up. 7 from a, an outside position comes a little bit tucks in and the back 4 keeps it a central uh, uh, area in relation of the ball.